Hey, what's up guys? This is Alan over at Sonic Electronics and uh, you may have seen in our previous video we had a, a Jeep that we did pretty much a, a full system upgrade using the factory OEM head unit. We upgraded the front and rear speakers. We utilized the factory subwoofer. That particular uh, car had a roll cage in it uh, which made us actually change the size and location of the speakers where they would have gone factory. So we happen to have another Jeep today. Um, it just happens to be right-hand drive. It's basically everything the same except backwards. So in the previous video, you've probably seen a lot of the car taken apart. We did a really detailed video on that. So we wanted to be able to show you what all is all in detail to put in a aftermarket set of speakers in the standard locations using the standard tweeter mounts and uh, standard um, speaker mounts uh, using the factory location. So you pretty much need to take out all the little seven mils that are around here so that way you can wind up with uh, getting this, this plate semi-loose here. Um, there's also gonna be um, a couple bolts on the side here and I believe one 10 mil at the bottom. Uh, once you've um, taken all three of those out, the enclosure that's behind this panel is going to be loose. Um, and what you'll pretty much want to do is what I like to do in this situation, just, just kind of have somebody hold this back while you kind of weasel it out of there. Um, otherwise, realistically, you're pretty much pulling the dash. Um, there's just not a lot of room. So this is kind of what I've found to make it easier without dismantling the whole vehicle. So, and it's worked for me before, so this is how I'm going to show you how to do it. So. Check it out. Check it out. Watch me do it. So I got the two seven mils out right there. Um, you can see it's already quite loose now. Um, but below here, there's one single 10 mil that's kind of attaching this thing on still. Um, and that's just kind of holding it to this brace here at the bottom. So once we get that out, then we can kind of weasel this thing out the side here. All right, so I did lie. It actually is an eight mil, so sorry. We got an eight mil now. This is a rusty pile of Jeep. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. This was a bar that was next to the speaker. I don't think I've taken that one out before. So I'm gonna try to take it out. Now I'm taking it out, see if it comes out a little easier. It may, it may not. Don't buy a Jeep. Things are terrible. Oh. Oh. So he's got to basically pull this pretty far back and kind of pull it down. Um, it looks worse than it is, but it all goes back together the same way. Uh, don't pull too far. You don't want to break your dash. But uh, this seemed to be the easier of the options without uh, taking apart the whole entire dash. So we're going to do the other side now. So we're gonna remove all our seven mils, kind of like we did on the other side. And uh, kind of get everything loose. So that just pops off. There's a couple more behind here. So now that should be fairly loose. We'll get these seven mils on the side here. Take those out, just let them fall, pick them up. So there is another eight mil right here. If you kind of look up there, it's on this side in the same kind of location. Uh, chances are your steering wheel is here and your glove box is on that side. So, um, so far from the other ones I've done, this is pretty much exactly the same, except it's just flip-flopped. So yours shouldn't really be any different than this except the glove box is on this side, steering wheel, control, steering wheel is on that side, so it's just backwards. That's it. So, now that we got this unbolted, I'm going to see if I can slip this thing out on this side. Look at that, look at that, see? Slide it over, comes right out. So this side's definitely a lot easier. It's still nice to kind of get this loose just so you can pull it back if you need to. Uh, but this one just comes right out. So there was the two that we removed on the side, two sevens. And then there's the one bracket on the bottom side that's the eight mil, uh, which is the exact same as the other side that holds that in. Once they're out, three screws, remove your speaker, pop in your new ones, put it back, etc. So 
pretty simple, but we're gonna go ahead and do that and move on to the tweeters and then we'll kind of show you quickly how to put it back together. All right, so we got our two mids out and uh, now we gotta work on our tweeters. Um, on this particular year, um, doesn't matter right hand drive, left hand drive, there is a small seven mil right behind the tweeter. You can kind of see there, I'll move my hand, but it's directly right behind here. You can unbolt that and you can remove this whole ear to install your tweeter. However, on the newer models, the whole top of the dash is all one piece. So you really have to take a lot apart to take that off. Another option, and maybe on this particular model, since it unscrews and it pops right off, you could do that. The other option is using your pry tool and popping, sorry, popping the tweeter out. Once you pop the tweeter out, then you can install your new one. The biggest challenge you're gonna have is what tweeter you're gonna use. Um, there's not a ton of depth in here. Uh, you also may have to file the opening down slightly to get your new guy in there. No, we didn't crack the window. It was already cracked. There we go. Pops right off. Little hooks in the front and snaps in the back and a little seven mil back there. I wanna show you something, if you own a Jeep. Don't put pins on top of your dash because they just fall down behind the cluster and then you've got pin after pin after pin after pin and you wonder where all your pins go. So don't put anything up here. All right, so what I did on the first one was I just basically trimmed this all out. That way this will actually fit back in and have some room for the tweeter. Now I have used other manufacturers tweeters before that actually have fit and snapped right back in here. So depending on what you use or what speaker you're using, I wouldn't just go ahead and cut that out right away. I would see sometimes you can take the shroud off the tweeter and disassemble it and pop it off. And sometimes they'll snap right in, which is really cool because then you can snap it in just like the factory one is. So this is the uh, NVX VSP tweeter from their component set. So because of its sheer size, uh, which isn't a bad thing, um, just for this particular car, it makes it a little more difficult to install in the little location that we have. Um, all we're basically doing is we're taking this apart. We're taking the tweeter out, throwing that away. Um, earlier, what I did was I trimmed this down. I had also said that before you start cutting it, check to see if you can take apart your tweeter like I kind of did there see if the tweeter will fit in there. All tweeters, depending on what brand and et cetera, what series are all completely different sizes. So don't just assume that you're gonna do the exact same thing that I just did here. Um, but then basically snap this guy back in, just like that. And now all that did was just allow us to have the room for the actual tweeter to go in there. Um, earlier I had taken the other one and just kind of stuck it in there. Once you push it in, you can see it actually fits already pretty snug. Uh, what I would definitely suggest doing is uh, putting some epoxy there on the edges. It's not gonna fall out, but uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend leaving it like that. Um, a little epoxy will just ensure that it actually sits flat um, and won't come out. Um, so it doesn't move around. I'm just gonna take a little bit of CA glue, and put three little dabs before I epoxy it. Perfect. Just a dab. Some of you guys go crazy. This is supposed to just, you know, hold something in place. Epoxy would definitely be a lot better of a choice than to just slop this everywhere. Um, I'm not really much into hot glue myself like some of you other guys are, but uh, this definitely is just simple and not gonna go anywhere. So this is the type of epoxy. This is something you could use. Um, it's basically an instant mix. It's part A, part B. You can either mix it yourself and dab it on there, or you can put in these little tubes that automatically mix it evenly, and it sets in five minutes. And something like that, a couple little dabs of that will definitely make, ensure that the tweeter is not gonna fall out. If you have any questions about this, refer to the manufacturer or read the instructions. We're gonna extend these wires. Basically what we're gonna do is 
We're gonna pop these guys back in. We're not gonna use the factory wire um, on the, if you follow me over this way, on the back of those enclosures, we actually attached the crossover network to the enclosure. So we're gonna plug this guy back in to its factory wire and those wires that are from the tweeter, they're, hang they're gonna come down. We're gonna connect those right there where it's labeled tweeter. So we basically got our input, our output to our mid, and then our output to our tweeter. And as you can see here, we went ahead and replaced the factory mid base drivers that were in it. Those are now out. There's nothing to them as you can see. And uh, now we got a much better speaker going in. I am extending this wire because the wire off the tweeter isn't gonna be long enough. So I figured we're using some NVX tweeters. Why not use some NVX audio wire? It only would make sense. Okay, so that one's back in. Oh, you're here. Yeah, if you wanna spend a little extra time and zip tie the wire up that you're running down, you can zip tie it with the uh, factory loom. And that way, you know, it's nice and secure and not gonna probably fall out or be yanked on. So we just zip tie it there. We might put another one back, just depending on where the uh, wire falls with the uh, crossover network. All right, so we're gonna start with this side first, because this is the side that is the biggest pain. And then we're gonna move to the other side. All right. Look at that, she's in. It actually wasn't as bad as it we all may have thought. So let's zip these screws in real fast. And then that way we can move on to the other side and we can be done. And this needs to go in here. Let's try that again. See the enclosure is bolted back in. We just gotta tighten down that last eight mil over there. Tweeter's hooked up, gotta put in our seven there. And on that side, I mounted the crossover network inside the enclosure. Um, as you can see on this side, there's this kind of little plastic piece right here, um, which if something mounted behind, would actually kind of be in the way. So let's get this thing put in. Just like that. And uh, I ran the wire out the side here and you've got the tweeter wire here. So we can go ahead and connect these two guys together and now our tweeter's connected to the crossover network which is inside the enclosure. Well, they definitely work. So, call the front speakers a day and uh, we'll wrap up. So we're gonna reinstall the four screws that we took out around the gauge cluster. There's also one, two, three, four, five. Five there at the bottom, six, seven. So about approximately six or seven, uh, seven mils we gotta put back in on this side. And I think there's about, uh, I don't know, six on that side as well too, maybe a little less. Um, and then we're gonna pop our panels back on and then the car's ready to go. And then we'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, pretty much what we did to this Jeep, even though the whole idea with this video is just to kind of show you how to install speakers in the factory locations instead of the one in the previous video, which was the roll cage.
Okay, I'm gonna pop this guy on. And the glove box just goes in just like that. Two little hooks, pops in, squeeze this, done. And then we're finished. All right, so we just finished up the component install in the front of this Jeep Wrangler. Um, as like in the beginning of the video we discuss, uh, pretty much we covered this speaker install to go along with our original video, which was a really detailed step-by-step -step video from installing uh, front speakers, rear speakers, a five channel, using the stock radio um, and utilizing the factory woofer. So we basically did that exact same thing in this Jeep. However, this Jeep doesn't have the roll cage, which is why we showed the original speaker location install. So we use the factory housings. We use the tweeters that were up on the dash uh, or the other one with the roll cage. We just did a coaxial down there. It didn't really have a, um, an enclosure for it. It just mounted to the roll cage. It was an aftermarket roll cage. Um, this one we did an aftermarket Pioneer radio um, to work with the um, same five channel that we did. We did the NVX JAD 905, which is now powering the uh, front NVX uh, VSP 65s, which is their components and the, um, their coaxials um, in the back. And um, we're also in this, uh, this Jeep as well, using the factory uh, enclosure uh, for the sub. So all in all, pretty much the exact same system. Pretty much the main differences are we use an aftermarket radio in this one, and then we actually were able, because this car doesn't have the roll cage, we're able to install the six and a half components like as if they were a factory. So please check out our other video, which is, like I said, all completely detailed step-by-step. -step. Way more informational than what this is. It's just a quick how to install front speakers in the Jeep Wrangler. So thanks for watching. This is Alan with Sonic Electronics.